Hi there, I'm hoping to give you an introduction into how simple it is to do planetary imaging with a telescope and nothing more complicated than just having a webcam. That simple. And these results are the results of using just a simple webcam. How do we go on? OK, so what do we need? Well, first of all, we need a webcam. And it's just a simple webcam, but uh, there are a number of them around, but just anyone will do. And then you need an adapter, which you can get from an astronomical shop, um, which basically adapts your webcam to the telescope draw tube. And it simply screws onto the webcam and is a push fit into the actual telescope draw tube itself. You will also notice that I'm using a times 2 Barlow to give me a greater magnification and the webcam is put on the end of this quite simply just locked up and that will give me a greater image size which you can use for the planets. Big advantage. Another thing I prefer personally to use is a flip mirror. The flip mirror enables the image to be viewed either through the eyepiece, which you can see coming out at the top there, or else um, through the actual camera itself. You've got a little knob on there that you can turn and it diverts it, but it does make it easier for focusing. And it's just something that I prefer, but if you want it simple, you don't have to have it. Right, so we've got our telescope set up, and say we've got it pointing at one of the planets, we'll say Jupiter, and what do we do now? Obviously, we fired up the uh, computer, and we've got the software that came to liven up our camera so we've got an image and we want to record that image and we want to record about a thousand frames of it in total length it doesn't matter what software you use when you click capture and you have a capture file this is what you'll actually see on the screen it's not a very good image I know but there it is dancing about that's the atmosphere shaking the image around and it's that that's the problem to give you any detail you can't see it because the Im the atmosphere is boiling away and as it is your image is moving the telescope's tracking the planet but you can't get away from the fact that the atmosphere is turbulent and it's causing the image to move this isn't your drive this is the actual light that's coming from the planet and it's being distorted as it's going through the atmosphere the idea is to try and get rid of some of this. All good fun, and all will be revealed in the end. Once you've finished recording your, say, 1000 frames, you then want to download a free program off the internet called Registax 5. Now, I can't emphasize too strongly that this is not only a free program, but it is an absolutely amazing piece of kit, written by astronomers for astronomers. That's all I can say and it's free. You download it, you just go and do a search on your uh, internet and you will find Registax 5. Download it and what it basically does is it will stack and enhance the images. Now when I say stack the images, I mean one, put one on top of the other. All that movement will be taken out. It'll all become clear as we go on. So now we'll download Registax 5 and we'll go from there. So the first thing that will happen as soon as you um, go to open the program you will get the home page which is this one here. There we go, Registax 5. The program will open up and this is where it gets really interesting because all you've got to do is go and find your file. The program will do most of the work for you. So there we go, we open it up and there's the the file that we captured. You'll notice that it's got the, the date there and also the time as well. Nice and easy because you can take loads of them you see. And click on it and a uh, image which isn't very clear at all as you can see comes up in a box. So you know you've got the right one. So you import it into the Registax program and you'll get a single image come up on the screen. Now you've got to put a box around it so once you've put a box around it and use your mouse to do this I'll show you that just bring it down there we go and we put the uh, the mouse over it and it'll, it'll have a box and then we just go up and it highlights it look it's got a line so now what's happening is it's playing back your video 
sorry if it's not that clear, but it's dancing all over the show. This was the image that you saw earlier on, where the atmosphere is boiling away and it's moving Jupiter as an image. And this program is going through and it's looking at it and it's seeing what the current one is. And you can see all those frames being processed. Oh, it's going like a lunatic. And it's free, absolutely free. So there we've got, we've got a reference frame and we've got a current frame. I'm not going to go into the details of how to use this because that's down to you. But I'm just showing you in real time what actually happens on this program. So once we've imported the, um, uh, the, uh, the frames, if you like, and they've been, uh, uh, they've been put on the screen, um, what will happen is it will stack them and then you can end, end up doing something with wavelets and this is just a way of enhancing it and we'll take this one up to about 64 and I'm using the bottom two sliders only and we'll take this one up to say uh, 39 something like that and then after that it will stack all those images now look what's happened to that grotty picture that we had amazing because you've stacked the images and you've actually found a reference point and put one image on top of the other and you've stacked a thousand of these. Oh dear, look what we've got now. Now, this is nothing like it looks off of my TV screen because obviously I'm doing this on a camera and everything else. But you can get an idea. There's the detail coming out. You can see swells and you can see eddies that are happening in the equatorial belts, different shades of colour. It's all there. Right, so here we now have the final shot used with the Registax software using that simple webcam and taking that image that we saw jumping about all over the show. You're starting to see real nice detail. It's not a really good image, but it was done just on the spur of the moment just to show you what you could get. Um, another one with a little bit more processing there. You can just see a little bit, but look, there is a lot of detail there. And this planet's a long way away. If we jumped in a nuclear-powered car and we set off at 60 miles an hour and drove 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, it's going to take over 760 years to get there. It's a long way. Here's a planet using a webcam again. You can see a, the shadow of a moon over the disk of the planet there and the equatorial band there you'll no notice that it's changed you've got two big prominent bands there now um, and that's that's changed that's how it was a few years ago and here's the red spot as well with also the shadow of a moon on there the red spots massive anyway how can you get any more help on this the most important thing is to look up your local club then after that you can get pictures of Jupiter and also my favorite Saturn Look at that, that's beautiful, isn't it? This is what captured me on astronomy. When I saw a little tiny image in the eyepiece of Saturn, I just could not get enough of it. I had to make my own telescope, and you can see that on this site as well, if you look for my channel. But the answers are there for you, and although this has been done for people with a telescope, it gives you an idea that you don't need really expensive gear to get going, to produce images like this. A simple webcam. Most people have got them and don't use them and chuck them in the bottom of a cupboard. Absolutely amazing results that you can get. And don't forget, those photons of light that have come in and either got to your eye or got to your camera travelled a long way. And it makes you feel very 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 humble and very small now i hope it's been interesting to you but one other thing i'd like to say wherever you are in the world looking at this there are so many astronomical societies around look up your local club they'll give you information they'll even allow you to use their own equipment go along and have a look at all these wonders up there that you can see they cost you nothing absolutely nothing to view and every year it's different Anyway, I hope it's been helpful to you. And this is Peter Bruce signing off. Bye.